Hello, I'm making a video here about the FPGA, uh, the Mr. FPGA, um, and uh, what my experience is with using it so far, and uh, and some tips, ten tricks for that I've found uh, while trying to set it up and use it. Um, so you can buy a full kit where you just get everything you need, um, but that wasn't possible when I bought it. Uh, so I first bought the this D10 nano kit board, which is uh, what is everything is based on, and uh, that's pretty much all you need for some of the things. Um, for example, this can run the AO486 DOS core, that runs like a, an old 486 computer, um, a bit slow compared to an, a real 486, but but it can that has all the features of a 486, um, and. Uh, an arcade course should not require anything else either, and uh, and Genesis. But when you try to run something other than those, they will require a RAM expansion module. Um, and uh, but otherwise, you just need the RAM expansion module and maybe a USB hub so that you can connect some extra stuff. Uh, the USB hub would be well, you need an OTD adapter uh, which can convert the micro USB port to to a full USB so that it can connect to an actual USB hub, um, but there are. Uh, but you can also set it up so that you have a, a other options here. Um, so what I did is I bought this uh, USB hub, um, and uh, the I/O board. There's also a new digital I/O board. I'm not sure what the differences between these two are, except I can tell that there's. A VGA port on the one, and that's not on the other, so that's probably I'm getting video out and stuff like that. Um, I also bought this RTC real time clock, which enables it to be able to tell the time, and uh, several of the cores also uh, supports this. So, for example, I think it's the Amiga core, the, which, call, which is called Minimic, and the AO486 core, they support using this clock so that they can tell the time. Um, Maybe the Mega CD also did it. Uh, I'm not completely sure. Um, and then I bought a RAM expansion. Um, I used this one so far. Um, so it gets the full amount of RAM, and it just plugs uh, right into the the mister itself. Into I think it's this port over here. Otherwise, it's this one, but um, yeah. <coughs> and then the I/O board itself goes on top as well, so you have to remove this plate. Um, and with the uh, USB hub, you get some of these uh, on things that you can then. Uh, so you need to unscrew these bottom ones and put the new ones uh, from the USB hub board uh, there instead. And um, and then you can take these uh, small ones and, and put on the bottom of, of the USB hub. And then it all fits together in, in one nice stack. Uh, and there's also some casings you can get for it, and I haven't done that yet. Uh, another thing to get was uh, this. I actually got both because I wasn't sure what I would need. Uh, but I got this one, and it helps connect to the USB hub. So that they uh, connect together to the, to the D10 nano kit itself. And then I also got uh, a heatsink. I actually got both of these heatsinks because I figured you might need both. But it turns out this is actually should be the better version because copper uh, apparently is better for leading away the heat um, than than this one. But I'm pretty sure both will do fine. Um, it's not like you. I don't even think there's options for overclocking and so on. And then there's the fans. When you buy this, you get some options for fans. Um, and see, people argue that this Noctua one is better, so I bought that. Um, but still, I'm also pretty sure that the difference is minimal. Um, it's very uh, low noise. I haven't noticed it making any noise, so that might be a benefit of the Noctua one. I also bought uh, the Wi-Fi adapter and a uh, Bluetooth adapter. And um, I bought these two. Uh, oh, all of this actually. Uh, I bought this uh, power supply unit so that it has 4 amps of, uh, 
of output and uh, this inline power switch which you then connect to this cord and then after this I connected this uh, supply splitter cable <coughs> sorry, sorry. and uh, this power splitter cable then enables me to connect both the power for the USB hub and the FPGA itself I'm not sure if that's actually needed because as long as the the FPGA itself uh, receives enough power from its port it should be able to just divert that power to the USB hub as needed but since I had the split I just connected both of them so um, and so far that has worked fine but I haven't tried to connect all kinds of things to it at the same time um, you could for example connect a USB hard disk to this and and then use an external USB or a USB memory stick maybe and then it can use that for for instead of a an SD card but natively it also supports having using a micro SD card for storage uh, when I bought the mister itself it came with an 8 gigabyte card uh, right now I've it upgraded it with a 128 gigabyte uh, mem uh, micro SD card uh, so that is the hardware I've got for the mister itself um, but other hardware you could get is the snack controller options um, these ones are just the PCB sets, so you would have to add the extra stuff they require, so that uh, the the benefit of those. Uh, oh, and this one you also need. Wait. Uh, yeah, you also need this one to to connect these. Um, so this one makes it uh, a snack converter that converts it into serial, and. Uh, so it has two uh, USB. Uh, it's it's easier to show here actually because this is this should be the snack serial kit itself, and then you can use it to connect, for example, this so that it supports um, a SNES controller, and this one to support an uh, NES controller, the uh, original Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, the benefits of this is, first of all, while you have the original controllers, but uh, second off, it also helps reduce the, the latency a bit, and uh, that is the benefit of using uh, FPGAs like the Mister um, that that you get better latency and more stable latency, um, uh, where whereas emulators might give unstable latency and uh, and you get latency both to the to the emulator itself that then can communicate with the computer's hardware and then uh, communicate to USB to controllers and to the and then there's also LCD displays and all of it uh, gives some it reduces the latency or it increases the latency actually and um, and uh, the biggest problem is probably that it uh, it gives an uneven latency in in, uh, in several emulators and uh, you can avoid that with these FPGAs. Another benefit of FPGAs is that they power on pretty instantly. Um, so I can show it here. Um, so here we have the mister. And um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> and um, here we have the different cores. So if, for example, I load the Commodore 64 core it comes up right away and you can start coding C64 stuff pressing L12 I'm going back to the menu and I can load other cores um, so that works very well I think um, and then you can go back to rebooting it and it's back to the Mister itself. Mm. So that is uh, what I would. That is what uh, I've gone through with hardware so far. <coughs> There's something on the way that uh, should help also uh, increase the options for hardware controllers, uh, so that you can connect even more original hardware to it. Um, I'm using this device to help record from the Mister. <coughs> As I just showed, I um, I can cr record the Mister on my PC, um, and this helps 
and it even gives the option for an HDMI in and an HDMI out so that you don't get any latency from this. Uh, so it'll just have a pass through and it'll uh, capture the signal as it passes through. Um, and, and in the HDMI out, I'll have a display without any latency on it. Um, and that works really well, I think. Just a moment. <coughs> oh well. Um, and to use it, I also need the OBS Studio, uh, which is this piece of software. And I can use it to switch between the different inputs. Mm. And uh, then there's the mister itself. Um, there we go. Yes, and then there's the mister itself, the software you need. Um, so this uh, page has a, has a description of how you set it up. Uh, you just uh, download the software and uh, and it'll install itself and and you run um, this uh, Mr. SD card installer and you uh, insert the micro SD card to into a PC with uh, an adapter or something and then it will um, set up the card itself. Um, but another thing to get is these uh, scripts, that uh, because with these scripts you can set up um, different things so that you can access it with uh, access it remotely. Um, and let's see, this Wi-Fi one I really recommend because for some reason I couldn't get it to work just using a LAN cable. Um, so I bought this uh, Wi-Fi adapter from here. Uh, this one, but it just it doesn't just work on its own. You need to connect it to a network and such, and that's where these scripts come in. And uh, you just take these scripts, download them. You can download all of them as a zip file and then just decompress them, and then you copy them to the mister. And uh, I have an a WinSDP connection to it using the guide from here. And uh, this software here, the WinSCP. Um, and it says here that the default username is root and the default password is 1. And then uh, WinSCP uses uh, SFTP to connect to it. Um, so to begin with, you might have to, if you don't get it to work with, um, with a cable, uh, with line cable and such. You can uh, just uh, plug in the SD card itself, and this is what you see with the SD card. Um, so this is uh, the mister when you look at it directly, uh, and it's uh, core software. Uh, and this is then the SD card you see here. Uh, so this is what you will see on your PC when you connect the SD card on it. Um, and it has the scripts folder, and if it hasn't, just make it and connect all the scripts in here. Um, and this will then give access to it on the mister. So if you go to the mister, um, and then click F12 from this menu, and it'll go to this menu where you can see other stuff. You can also click switch to USB. Uh, it requires that it has a USB connected, but yeah. And then you go into scripts, and it will give a warning because these scripts can mess everything up. It will just say yes to the warning, and. It has all of these settings, for example, using G uh, Google Drive to save, um, to store safe games. You can enable FTP access, you can enable a firewall, fast USB polling, which helps uh, reduce the latency for USB controllers. You can change the MAC address. I guess that's the benefits of an FPGA, um, although you can do it on other hardware as well. Reboot it. I'm not sure what RC clone actually does. RTC is to um, connect online to set the RTC clock, uh, that hardware expansion I showed earlier. Samba is, um, is what Windows used for file sharing. It might be easier for some to use that. 
but I prefer to avoid it. Uh, and then there's SSH, which I enable to uh, to be able to use WinSCP. And then you can set the time zone with the time zone. I'm also not sure what the sound fund is. And then there's the update, where you can update uh, the mister itself and all its software. And then you can update Richard Driven, which is the arcade course. And then you can switch video modes. And uh, lastly, this one, the Wi-Fi uh, connection. And that is uh, where I set it up to connect with the Wi-Fi. Um, SIFS mount, I'm not actually sure what that is either. Build MAME ROMs, I think that's if you get have the um, source code for a MAME, which is uh, the arcade course. And then you can pair uh, Bluetooth devices if you have Bluetooth connected. And then update current course only if you have installed a bunch of cores and then you only want to update the ones you have installed and you can run that. So those are really useful scripts. Mm. Another thing you can get is um, mm, I guess that's not you have to use a core first. So let's say we run the DOS core. I'm using free DOS with this one but I've set up several systems that I'll make another video for. Um, so when we're in here, and in this call you actually have to use the Windows key and F12 instead of just F12. And uh, then you have this option to use filters. Um, I'm using a bike you cubic one here, but all of these is just in here as well. Um, filters, and there's the uh, different filters, and the specific ones, all kinds of filters. Um, I'm just normally using this one. There's also gamma correction, and I haven't used these, but I've seen people recommend it. Let's go back to the original mister, and here. So yes, that's, uh, that's my setup for now. Um, and uh, yeah, another advantage of the mister is all the cores that it supports. It, uh, it's really amazing how many cores it supports now. Uh, this is the list of most of them, I think, if not all of them. Um, so Vectrex is a really old system. Um, Super Nintendo, Turbo Graphics. Oh yes, I think Turbo Graphics actually also works without the RAM upgrade. Um, the Atari machines, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Um, one, has, one I would recommend looking into is, um, is the Mega CD. That's an expansion that came for the Genesis Mega Drive console where you could uh, add a CD drive to it. And there was games developed for this that are pretty interesting. So they had uh, extra audio and they get better graphics and so on because now they didn't have much of a limit on the storage capacity for the games. Um, I'm playing a game called Snatcher these days now, uh, which is really good. Mm, yeah, and there's some cheat engine, engine features in some of the cores, and you can also uh, install Linux to it, which will help control the um, the files on the master itself, on the FPG, on the, um, without having to connect it to a PC. Um, yes. And that's everything, I guess. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Soon I'll try to make a, a video about how to set up DOS for the mister um, and the different cores there. Because uh, it's not only free DOS I've been using for it, it's, uh, it's other things as well. Well, that was it for, for this time. Have fun. Bye again.